Right, my friend, the good and bad news I have for you now that in 100 years from now, you all will be dead. Probably, you're, you're <laughs> well, probably your kids, the kids of your kids, your entire species will disappear in 100 years. And that's not my opinion. There is, that's according to people you probably know and trust. According to Elon Musk or Stephen Hopkins or like Bill Gates, we have very high probability that our species, the Homo sapien, on the way we know it today, it will disappear in 100 years from now. Very high probability. Multiple reasons. We can talk about like global warming. You can talk about uh, 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 um, a nuclear war where we have currently, if you can see that small, small one here, a small, small bomb here, which is uh, Hiroshima and uh, Trinity, which is the ones we used them 50 years ago. We currently have a bomb in, uh, 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 enough, uh, actually one and uh, 0.3, to destroy the total land mass of, of, of the globe, the total, uh, everything we have. Uh, it might be artificial intelligence. There will be many, many scenarios, people debating, and super intelligence people debating, that within the next 100 years, you guys have a very high chance that we will not exist and our species on, 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 uh, on complete. Meanwhile, if you look about the spending, the governmental spending for military of each of the nations. So you notice with me here, United States spending around 730 today, 730 billion dollar just to create guns. You have like uh, around 220, China. This is 2013, so I have the updated numbers, not, but not the updated slide. And so on, if you look on the total, we are spending about three trillion on guns, creating guns. And I look to, every time somebody tell me, it's like, oh, billions and so many billions and stuff, it's just like, I, I, you know, you, I, you lost me. Because I don't have reference for that, you know? Like, I don't have on my account a couple of billion to know what's that. But just for your reference, according to FAO, Food and um, Agriculture Organizations, we need 44 billion sustainable investment for 10 years to eliminate hunger from the world. We have around 800 million uh, below, uh, they get less than one, $1 per day, which is we consider them poor. So to eliminate hunger from the world, we need, in one statistic, on one study, it's 44 billion, and the other one is 30 billion. Sustainable investment for 10 years. Now, if you take the proportion, you're gonna understand. So we spend 700 billion, just one country, United States, 750 billion to create guns. And 5% of that sustainable investment could eliminate the entire hunger from the world. <clears throat> now, if you ask yourself, or if you let me ask you, why? Why United States spending all this money for guns? Why China putting all this two, three hundred billion a year to create guns? In their opinion, to protect the civilized world, to protect themselves. Absolutely, absolutely. They think there is an uh, enemy somewhere else and they have to create guns so they can defend themselves against that enemy. So China do the same because United States is creating guns and spending a lot of money for guns, so they go and spend money for guns. Russian do exactly the same. So everybody sell to us that there is an enemy somewhere else and so we have to spend all this money for guns, right? Now, if you stop my dad um, 50 years ago and you tell him, what do you think about Chinese or Russian or something? He might be scared of them. He never met one of them. If you stop 
a Russian gentleman on the street 50 years ago and tell him, what do you think about American? What do you think we should you know, get rid of them? There is a good chance he will say yes. Maybe, you know, but there is a good chance he will say yes. Now let's stop somebody today and ask him, stop any person in the United States on the street and say, what do you think? Should we get rid of Russia and Russian? Should we kill them? Do you, what do you think the chances the people will say yes? Very little, if, if not zero, you know, the, except this extreme, extremist people. What happened? We're, what, what, what I'm trying to present here, what I'm trying to communicate, the fear, the fear of the unknown was very strong 50 years ago. My dad never met a Chinese guy in his life, so he might fear Chinese person. An American gentleman, he might never met a Russian in person or communicated with him directly in all his life. So there was a fear. What happened through that time until today, we don't have. We meet these people. You have Facebook account. You do have Facebook account. And over there, even you deactivated your account, but you have Facebook account. And you see Chinese people, and you see Japanese people, and Argentinian people. And you know they have the same fears like you, the same dreams like you. You don't have anymore the fear that my dad has. We don't have the fear that our parent years ago had. Government still sell to us that fear exists. Government still react as it is 50 years ago. And we should fear the other. While we has developed to a level, we don't fear the other, the different. <clears throat> that was around 1930 something. And you know that time, the biggest problem on the world was the 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 feces you you might know about this part like the 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 horse feces uh, you know like that was the biggest issue of the world it's just like oh the city will be swimming on the on the horse feces that was right and they think that was the world at that time this might be in 20 30 years or this this is currently our map in 200 years ago it was like this While I'm unable to play this video right now, not an not a issue, but what I want to communicate, showing this map and this map, showing how was the world here and how this involved. It is dynamic. It is dynamic. And when we think on the current structure, we always think, when we think, it just, it is, when we think of the borders, we have today, we don't think of it as it is going to change. We think of it as a static something. What I'm trying to propose, <laughs> and I'm going to uh, 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 present it on the next final slide, we are already united. The people on the world today is already united. We already use same languages, we already go to the same site, we have the same fear. We, the people around the world, we are united. We have a structure using internet and technology allow us to feel belonging to someone. He share the same ideas with you online more than belonging to someone he share with you the physical territory. And you have that all the time with your Facebook group, with your WhatsApp group. You share concept, ideas, and you feel belonging to them way more than people around you on that same territory. What, what define a country? What I'm trying, it's like language. This is blah, blah, blah. There is countries with 500 languages like India or so. Geography, of course, not common values. We have belonging today to others. Now, if you think... This is here, the supercontinent. A supercontinent is an old concept, right? We, we, uh, um, when all was all united. What we have today is pretty much supercontinent. 
what we need to survive and our species is actually a supercontinent. We already, all the people on this globe, we're doing the, the ice bucket things from China to United States. When the gentleman of Gangan style, he put his music, we all danced of it, not just in Korea, but in Brazil and in Argentina and everywhere. Who is now watching, like uh, Casa di Papel, probably 80% of these people here, not just you, it's translated to all languages. And all your colleagues everywhere is watching the same movie on Netflix. We read the same book, the same encyclopedia which is we created, Wikipedia. We are today start using a one unified currency, cryptocurrency of Bitcoin or Ethereum. We are already with a united unity concept. We're, we're living in a supercontinent in our head. My friend, if you go tonight to your home and you wake up tomorrow with only one thing missed, the concept of country. If you go your home and every person on the globe and wake up next day without memory of country, would you ever create country, the same border we have today? Would I ever tomorrow wake up and create Brazil on the same border? Or China on the same border? We would never do that. Probably we'll have many, go many governments. Probably we'll have one centralized government, minimized one. Probably we'll have one tax ID. So there will be no fiscal paradise place. So you can't hide your dirty money anywhere. Probably you will have one passport and you can travel wherever you want. Probably you will have one currency and you can use it all around the world. Probably so much things will be different. What we had with blockchain, what we had with the concept of conflict resolution using the people we presented here, probably the next milestone on providing and in, in enriching us to this supercontinent. Thank you.